In this video, we're in Google Sheets, and I want to show you how to import data from another workbook. So I've got a workbook called Sales Data, and it has four sheets, bakeware, cookware, cutlery, and drinks. This is all sales data. I want to be able to import some of this data into another workbook. Now we're going to do a couple of things when we import the data. I want to import data from all four sheets onto one sheet in the other workbook, but I also want to exclude any exchanged or refunded transactions. So let's see how we can do this. So I'm in the workbook that I want to import data into, and the function I can use is called import range. Now, import range has two arguments, spreadsheet URL and range string. So what is spreadsheet URL? If I go back to the workbook that I want to import data from, you can see that it has a URL at the top here. Now, I don't actually need to use the whole of that URL. The bit that I definitely need is this key here. And the key is between the D here and that forward slash and then the forward slash and edit so it's just this bit here so if I copy that go back to my formula and I need to put it in quotation marks that is my spreadsheet URL comma now range string is the area of the worksheet that you want to be able to import so if I go back to the bakeware sheet you can see my data is in a through to K. It's actually in cells A1 through to K101. Now I have to put the range in quotation marks. So I could type A1 colon K101. And if I close the bracket and press enter, initially you'll get this ref error. And that's because Google Sheets needs you to allow access to this other workbook. So if I click on allow access, it brings through the data. Now, one thing to notice is that by default, it brings through the data on the first sheet in your workbook. So all of this data, if I look at it, is all bakeware data. You can see that in the product category column. So unless you specify a sheet in this range string argument, it will always pull data from the first sheet in your workbook. But we'll deal with that later because eventually we want to retrieve data from cookware, cutlery, and drinks. The other thing I want to discuss though is whether we actually need to specify these row numbers in our range string argument. At the moment, if I went back to the bakeware sheet and if I was to add new data here, just for argument's sake, I'll just add a quantity here and a price here. I'm expecting this sheet to bring through that data. So let's see if it does. And it hasn't done that. And that's because I'm only looking down to row 101. So to get around that, what I could do is just get rid of the row reference on both of those cell references. So now it's going to pull data from the whole of column A through to the whole of column K. If I scroll down here now, you can see it's picked up that new data. And indeed, if I went back and added another row, again, I'll just add minimal amounts of data here. You can see it's automatically picked it up. You have to wait maybe a second or so, but it will pull through the data. Just get rid of that back on the bakeware sheet. Okay. Now I do want to specify the sheet name in this argument here, the range string argument. So again, this has got to go within the quotation marks. So all I'm going to do is put in the sheet name followed by an exclamation mark. If I press enter, you can see it pulls through the same data. But if instead of bakeware, I put cookware, 
Now it's pulled through the cookware data. Okay, so hopefully you're getting the idea here. Now at the moment, we're only pulling data from one of the sheets, but I want to pull all the data from the bakeware sheet, the cookware sheet, the cutlery sheet, and the drink sheet, put it all together into one table. Now we can use the import range function to do this, but we have to use it several times within the same formula. So what I'm going to do is copy this formula and then put a semicolon in after the first formula and paste in my next formula. Now this semicolon will basically allow us to import data from the different sheets into the same columns. If you wanted to import the data side by side in the same rows, then instead of a semicolon, you'd use a comma there. But obviously we were importing the data into the same columns within this sheet. Now, all I need to do is change the sheet reference here. So I've got cookware twice, I've got cookware here, and I've got cookware here. Now I'm gonna say bakeware for this. And then what you have to do, because you're using import range twice within the same formula, you need to put a pair of brace brackets around the whole of your formula, which includes the two import range formulas. And then if I press enter, you can see I get cookware here. And if I scroll down, I get some spaces. It looks as though bakeware hasn't been imported. But if I keep going down, eventually I get to bakeware. So these are all the empty rows in the cookware sheet. So we need to deal with that eventually. But before we deal with those spaces, let's add the data from the other sheets. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy everything from the semicolon onwards, copy it, paste it in at the end of the formula, and this one can be cutlery. And then paste in again. And the last one is going to be drinks. If I press enter, I've got all the data now. If I scroll down, I've got cookware, loads of blank rows. Then bakeware, loads of blank rows then cutlery, loads of blank rows. And then right down at the bottom, we've got drinks. So not very usable at the moment. So we need to get rid of those blank rows. Back to my original formula. And to get rid of the blank rows, we're going to use the query function. And we're putting our existing formula within the query function. So equals query. The query has two mandatory arguments that we're going to use here, data and query. So our data is returned by our existing formula. So I'll put a comma after that. And then query. Now we don't want to import the blank rows. So in the query argument, I'm just going to write where col1, so the first column of the data that we're currently returning, is not null. So basically, if it's not empty. So if I close the bracket there, press enter. Now, if I scroll down, you will see that it's got rid of all of those empty rows. Now, I also want to exclude any rows that contain the word exchange or refund in the returned column. Now, the column position of the return column is 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And I can add that criteria to the query argument in my query function. Now, because I've got two sets of criteria, the first of which is where col1 is not null, the second criteria needs to be preceded by the word and. So basically, I'm saying both criteria need to be true. I've got and in there, and I'm going to say col11 equals no. Now I put no in single quotation marks. Press enter, and you can see now only returns the transactions with a 
return status of no. Now in this second sheet, I want to perform some calculations on the sheets in the other workbook. I want to add up the total revenue for each of these product categories. You can see the revenue column there. The revenue is always in column I in each of the sheets. And the first revenue value is in I2. So I'm going to use equal sum, import range, spreadsheet URL. Well, I can get that from URL up here. Just need the key part of it. That needs to go in quotation marks. Range string. Well, what I want to do is refer to the value that I've got in here for the sheet name of my range string. So I'm going to click into A2 and then concatenate that with an exclamation mark because a sheet name is always followed by an exclamation mark and then the range of cells that I want to perform the calculation on. So that's I2 down to the bottom of column I. So I just put to I. Close the speech marks, two close brackets at the end, press enter, and it does the calculation for me. And I can copy this down and it will do it for the other product categories. A little bit of formatting maybe, and we're done. Okay, hopefully that has been useful to you. Bit of an introduction to the import range function. If you have found it useful, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you next video.